Welcome back. Now, just before we came on air this morning, I spoke with a lovely lady called Jill Allen King, who's a blind campaigner, and she's been calling on the government to do more to tackle the UK's guide dog shortage. She came into the studio along with her MP, Anna Firth, and guide dog Jagger, who is just adorable. And I started off by asking Anna what the campaign is all about. So Jill is an absolute South End legend. Jill has got an MBE and an OBE for her work in helping people uh, with sight problems. And I went to her church a few weeks ago and she told me that she is about to lose Jagger, that the guide dogs are going to come and take his harness away in June. And for Jill, that is a disaster. She's had guide dogs for 51 years. It keeps her fit, it keeps her healthy. And Jagger is a completely healthy working dog. So... I asked Jill what was going on, and it appears there is a national shortage of guide dogs. But my point as Jill's MP is someone who's done so much for others should be the very last person who loses her independence. Absolutely. And what we can do here, quite simply, is if a dog is healthy uh, and it's fit and it's willing to work, just let the dog carry on for a little bit longer. Now, Jill, I know you're very familiar to this world of campaigning. You've been on the telly and the radio a lot because over the course of your life, you've done so much for blind people. You introduced what I call the Braille pavements, so the tactile pavements, which yeah. means that blind people can cross the road safely. Yeah. It's sort of ironic, then, that you should find yourself in this situation of potentially being out without a dog. Tell me how important Jagger and all the dogs you've had have been to you over the years. Well, because I went totally blind when I was 24 and spent seven years virtually housebound, only went out when anybody took me out, yeah. that was really because I had my daughter in the first year and I didn't want to go away for the four weeks training. And I didn't really know anything about guide dogs. I didn't know about being totally blind, which was a different world to me. And I did campaign uh, to start with for long cane training training but that gave me no confidence at all yes. and so eventually I did go for my first guide dog topsy in 1971 and that changed your life presumably who changed my life completely I mean she gave me back all the confidence that I'd lost when I went blind she gave me my mobility so that I could go out when I wanted to go out not when I, my husband or my parents could take me out. I was able to go out. I could take Jacqueline to school on my own. But the first thing that happened, I took Jacqueline to the local library and um, straight away I was refused, you know, access with my... With with Topsy. Which defies the point of you being given the independence that the dog yeah, afforded you. Precisely. And so for forever, all these years, I've been campaigning to improve access um, on all aspects for blind people and guide dogs and, and the environment, as you've said. And I haven't been... I was only without a guide dog for 12 weeks when my first guide dog died suddenly when she was 12 and a quarter. And in those days, they had no time limit any rate. Right. Um, and so from then on, I've had like, my fourth, fifth and sixth guide dogs were allowed to work till they were 11. Yes. And even my fourth guide dog, Quella, there was nothing wrong with her at 11 either. And my vet said it was cruel and wicked to make her retire because nothing wrong with her. She wanted to work. And I couldn't see then. And she lived to 15 and yes. a half. And, so we... and Jagger, Jagger's actually fine. Mm. I mean, Yes, he, this... he's been um, checked by my vet on December the 20th that he was fine, not showing any signs of ageing, because having all those dogs, I, I know some of them get tumours and their back legs go, so I know what happens to them when they yes. get older. And Jagger... None, none of that has happened. So guide dogs, I don't know whether they didn't believe my vet, but they certainly wanted Jagger checked by their vet, which he was checked on the 7th of March. And um, we went up to the training centre where he was checked. Yeah. And and he's fine. Again, no... no. So he's been checked out. And basically, what you're saying is, Anna, another year, at least have another year of Jagger being with Jill, helping her through her daily life. I know you've spoken to the Prime Minister about this, so tell us about this. You had a meeting with Rishi Sunak, Anna. 
Yes, so, so we're, we're, we're saying that where a dog is fit and well, and that's very important because it's a safety issue, if the dog is fit and well and the dog it wants to work, then why not let the dog carry on and then both parties, Jill and the dog, will be happy and independent. But um, Jill came with me last week to a reception at number 10 for community champions, and Jill is a community champion. She's a national champion. She's, she's a national treasure. And she met Rishi Sunak... And and I think you should tell the story, Jill, because you didn't, let, you didn't let go of his hand, no, did you? I mean, I've learned over the years, meeting ministers over the years, um, in the past, originally, I would shake hands with them and then I'd let go and they'd walk away and yes. I didn't know they'd gone because being totally blind. And I'd end up talking to myself. So <laughs> my policy now is to hold their hand and Good. I told Richie this. So I hang on to him for the, I don't know how long I was talking to him, too long, I think. But I hung on to him, gave him a copy of my autobiography, Great. Just Drill, and said, read that. Yes, I've got these here. So you've and, written two books about your life, which then, we shall show here. You know, but what did he say to you, Jill? Well, he said um, he was shocked. He, he sounded shocked that there's a thousand people waiting for a guide dog. And um, he said to Anna, are oh, you on to it? And she said, yes, which she is. And he said, let me know if I can help in any way. Now, I mean, as Prime Minister, there, there's not a lot he can do, but there's a lot of um, other people can do to help. Because I'm not just concerned about myself. Of course. The, those thousand people, they're people like me that have been mobile and we're being told that we've got to wait 18 months or two years. And I know before, although they're trying to blame the lockdown, prior to the lockdown, mm. my friend on Cumbie Island, she had to wait three and a half years for That's her fourth guide dog. That's astonishing amount of time. I mean, even David Blunkett had to wait up to two years for his replacement dog. So when you've been independent, yes. to have your mobility taken away... I mean, although I'm 83 now, and I still want to be able to go out, a dog gives you an incentive to go out every of day. Of course. And, and Anna, I, what, I mean, in a nutshell, what can be done? I think we can solve this by, by, by making sure that we look at the dogs. If the dog is fit and healthy and willing to work, then let the dog carry on. Obviously, if the dog isn't fit and healthy, it wouldn't be right, it wouldn't be fair on the dog, and it might be unsafe. So let's just take an individual approach to this. Let's not have a yes. blanket ban on dogs retiring. And for a, a, a local and a national legend like Jill, we've, we've really got to do everything we can to keep her active and keep her making a difference for others. Absolutely. Ladies, thank you so much for joining me. And should we just pay tribute to Jagger, who <laughs> we're not meant to be working with children or animals in television, and this dog has been an absolute dream, so it's no wonder that you want to keep him. Yeah. He, got, he got his Pride of Britain award medal from Paul O'Grady as well. Deservedly so. Thank you very, very much indeed, ladies. Lovely to see you this morning. Thank you. It's lovely to thank be on. You.